Can you turn that down, please? It's very loud. I'd get a quieter one if I was you. <laughs> Seriously, could that get any louder? <laughs> I'm sure it's louder than the old one. <laughs> It'll go off in a minute. Hold on. There you go. See, hello, welcome to the <laughs> PM Models Kit Show. Here we are. Compressor, anyone? And he's like a walking advert for how quiet they are now. <laughs> <laughs> That's one noisy Bambi. Absolutely. <laughs> Bless. Never mind. Although we we are, don't forget, Andy's at the moment isn't using his normal microphone. He's using the webcam one. So chances yeah. are, if you add your other one back, it might not be as loud. And I honestly haven't got a clue which microphone because I've got three. Do you want to tap them? Go on, tap them. No. No. Try the other. That yeah, one, isn't it? That's it. Is it? It's the one behind me there. It's the one behind your head. It's the one, the one furthest closest. away from the compressor as well. Yeah, it's closest to the compressor. Okay, it's the closest one because the compressor's under the bench. Oh, is it under there, is it? Oh, perhaps that's yeah. what it is. Anyway, good. <laughs> Phil, speak loud. I can't hear you. Am I quiet? Am I quiet? No. And he's being sarcastic about the... Um, oh, right. Oh, is he? Right. Okay, fair enough. Anyway, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the uh, PM Models afternoon show. Um, we are currently here. We are on the 29th of April, almost the end of the month. Um obviously don't forget like andy to get your mig finished by tomorrow, tomorrow night <laughs> no pressure he's only got a decal it get it on its gear finished weathered oh, arm it, arm it's, it. It's are you working percent. tomorrow yeah oh so really got today <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> andy might be head down in a minute <laughs> trying to get on with it hey more like the mig sig might get an extension yeah the mig sig's gonna be extended to the it's gonna, weekend it's gonna be like us leaving europe <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it, it's just ongoing anyway good yeah. afternoon everybody welcome to the show as i said uh, very much informal these days it's not our truly normal one purely because well as i say you got the guys are stripping out the store very quickly to be honest matt's getting upset because all his stock not, as fast it, as he's coming in is going out <laughs> yeah. yeah it's stripping my patience yeah that's it it's stripping not only the stock but it's his patience as well that's just as his ocd is looking good with it all lined up and racked up and all the paints there you guys keep buying it so can we slow down please <laughs> not too much no clearly. don't slow down definitely don't slow down <laughs> but anyway um obviously matt is doing his best up there for restocking the stock's coming in daily at the moment um and uh <laughs> for restocking stuff and <laughs> some more than others apparently that's yeah, another story and i cock up while i'm supposed to be getting in stock <laughs> so but, yeah but yes but anyway we are obviously restocking just as fast as we can but again everything is a little bit still up in the air with how things are so some things are coming in some things aren't some things we're expecting a turn up aren't turning up things we're not expecting do turn up so you just never know at the moment it is literally a little bit of a, a lottery uh, with orders coming in and out but Matt is doing a stellar job up there trying to keep up to date with it trying to keep the stock levels up trying to keep sane trying to keep sane <laughs> you might need a holiday or a straight jacket we're not sure at the end of this yeah I'm going somewhere at the end of this I know yeah <laughs> and yes Lee the, bo the boxes have turned up on that yes. yeah the boxes have turned up so what I have done today is a load have gone out this today uh, when did they go? Just before, just after lunch, I think. Anyway, when I went to the post office, a load of go out tomorrow, a load of go out. I've got to do them in batches. There's that many, so but they'll all be out this week. Who's pre-ordered? Who's paid? Will be out to you on the MI24 front. So yes. So hopefully, fingers crossed. Next week, at some point, they'll all tip up at your houses. Yes. So seems yeah. To be. And the post seems to be getting better because everyone seems to be getting all the orders that I sent out on Monday. Uh, mm. Everyone's getting them as well. So it sounds like the post is sort of working again. Uh, Jez has yeah. got a quick question. Can you get him in the Tamiya 132 second mozzie? Yes, mate. Of course I can. Yeah. Somebody asked, they asked me as well because I'll answer him on here because I know he's watching um, about the Tamiya Lancaster 48th one. It isn't the Dam Busters one, it is the normal bomber version, so I can get them in as well. So I will literally, when I'm done here, will ring my man, 
to put the order in. So yes, Jez, if you want me to uh, get you one, I can get you one, no problem. And if anybody else wants any time of your 30 seconds, still shout up before I put the order in, because it'll help me. Because we're <laughs> doing them on, they're on the site, but really I order them in because it's a blooming expensive to sit on the shelf. So yeah. there's Spitfires, Hurricanes, Mustangs, whatever. If you do want them, shoot me a uh, an email just to say, yeah, can I have one? And I will order them in. If you all ask, then you can put one order in rather than putting an order in today and another one tomorrow and then another one the day after. Yeah, because it does annoy yeah. them at the warehouse when I keep up, especially uh, my uh, friend, the rep, Ian, when mm. I ring him up, when I keep forgetting to <laughs> order. Can you just add this to the order? Can you add this to the order? I forgot this. And he's just like, it's good yeah. job he knows it's me. <laughs> um, put it that way. But yeah, if you do, just shoot us an um, uh, email over and I'll say I'll either do it when we've come off here if you'll answer his phone. If not, I'll do it in the morning. And fingers crossed it should be here for Monday. They've been really good. They've been good, yeah. It's been really good. I might even get it Friday, but I can't. Pro I'm definitely not going to promise Friday. It depends how um, how fast it goes through. But it'll be here for next week. So he says yes, please, Matt. Is that for Jess? Yeah, for the most part. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, what Andy will do, we'll sort out and we'll get you an invoice sent over for that, Jess, and um, and I'll get you one ordered. So yeah. Uh, <laughs> Andrew, we do have a back order system on the site. Put your name yeah. down in the system, and it will back order it for you. Yeah. Um, the way that the website actually works, if I pick something that's out of stock, I can just show them. Um, so, like in here, this is out of stock now. We're sold out. All the Heinz went. Uh, but obviously, if you pop your, your email address in there and click sign up, you'll then go into the pile on this on a back order system. And then it gives us an idea of how many we need to get in. So then obviously what we do is that then we will email you uh, on our new system that works a treat. Doesn't <laughs> Andy? <laughs> Does now. And uh, then that way it will send you a link directly to buy it um, via the email. So literally you just click buy it on there and it will put you in the cart uh, on the site. And then you can go to the site if you want to and add other things to it, so forth and so on. Or you can just check out directly from there uh, to get your said item. But that works for anything entirely on the PM store anyway. So anywhere you want to grab anything, you can do it just like that. So it, and it works, to be honest, very well once we know how it works. Don't we, Andy? But yes we do now because we're an expert on it now yes so yes. well to be fair you would think it would do it uh we said well yeah admittedly yeah. we did think it was more of an automated system we didn't realize it needed human intervention a man in the loop so to speak to make yes. it work but now we do we know how it works <laughs> so the other thing to say is everybody obviously because i i now we've looked into this system we've seen who's waiting for what so uh mr obby no yeah mr obby stuff is in i need to put it back in stock but what i'm doing is i'm just catching up on hind orders and then i'm going to put it in so it's probably going to go back in tomorrow also doing tomorrow potentially i'm thinking more friday is an order from ak so that's a restock of the oil paints the thinners oh god it's a big order i can't even remember what i ordered so that's doing as well that's been sent again I, I think there's a few people waiting for stuff obviously starship bill will be on there somewhere yeah uh again that will be in for the weekend i've got to put that manually put that in um and there's something else that's coming in oh hataka which i've got a feeling might even come today if not that will definitely be in tomorrow so that's paint sets and they've got everything i think i said it before earlier in the week they seem to have attacker have either reopened or back open so they've had a full restock so again the paint sets will be back in that's been out of stock the single paints will be back in the thinners yeah so there's going to be quite a lot coming on by the weekend of, of restocks of paints and sundries and stuff like that cool very good um yeah. somebody was just saying about uh i was just saw it in a uh a, Sorry, I'm just trying to work out what Dennis is actually on about. He's just talking as if he's talking to himself about UK can ship kits by air, but not petrol-based products, acrylics. They go by container ship. I don't know if that's a question or a statement. I'll just try to work that out. I can't. I was looking for the other part of the question, but I can't seem to find it. Um, question. Uh, can I use Tamiya lacquer thinners with Hataka orange lime paints? That's fast becoming our most asked question. Mm. yes you can so yes and to be honest that i think that's what we all do isn't it well yeah. that and self-leveling thinners 
Yeah, lovely thinners. Yeah. 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 To be honest, Tamiya Lacquer thinners, and obviously they do the orange tap as well, is very, very similar to obviously the uh, Mr. Hobby uh, Lacquer thinners and self leveling thinners. But bang for buck, the yeah, that one there that Andy's got up works out cheaper. Yeah. It's cut the quid cheaper to do it that way. Well, that's 400 mil, you get 350 mil in, the, sorry, 250 mil in a Tamiya, don't you? Yeah, and 400 so, mil in one of them. Are they about the same sort of price? No, this one's a little bit cheaper, but we did do a mil for mil. It works out yeah. cheaper for that one, isn't it? Because these are £7.50, and then I think the the other ones are nine quid. But obviously you get more. Yeah. So, But when we worked it out, it works out a little bit uh, better on that one. Can I just answer uh, do, 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 where I've lost Tony's thing? Because he said, will, will you have a cut-off date? I presume this is for a Tamiya kit, is it? The cut-off dates, well, I'll be ringing him either sort of later on today or definitely tomorrow. But we'll put Tamiya orders in. So it's, you know, you just let me know and I'll just tag it on an order. They do seem to be ordering quite a bit. Obviously, with Tamiya paints are just flying out the door at the minute. So and masking tape and thinners and stuff so yeah just let me know and i'll tag it on yes yeah you know at the end of the day like if you want anything ordered from the store whatsoever um you know sometimes it's better to shoot us a message just to make sure we can get it because we can't get everything uh we can get most things but occasionally you guys ask for something weird and wonderful and we just can't get it but uh, mm -hmm. if it's on the store, as I said, if you just do the uh, through the sign up system with the email address, that means it will then fall into the back order system. We'll see it then and we can order things in for you. So literally, that's how it works. And again, usual thing, new parts and bits and pieces are being added all the time down into our very extensive list of everything, um, as you can see down in here. So if you do want to grab anything kit wise, oh. but go on. Just, just while I remember, because I need a new little logo making. Right. For Dora wings because we're getting all their um, little hurricanes in stock. Right. Okay. I'm literally getting them tomorrow, um, and apparently they're really, really nice. So mm -hmm. I will send you one for review. Uh, but I know Jamie's made. Hey, oh, who's that? It's Sam. Sam. Here he is. Sam. Help, Sam. Grumpy's <laughs> <laughs> <Trumpies> in. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, the. Um, yeah, the door rings or a canes. I know, like, Jamie's made a, I think he's made a couple, hasn't he? So, um, they're supposed to be really nice. So, yeah, we're, we're getting them in. There are, I think they are listed in the miscellaneous bit, but I think they're going to have their own section. Right. So, and also, when I get round to it, we're going to split up the AK sections up into proper, because I think the metalizers are in with the real colours sets, and, yeah, yeah. they all need breaking up into into proper categories so that's another thing to do on the to-do list mm -hmm. but yeah talking about that on that ak order is the metalizers yeah the metalizers are back in so so yes good if, stuff if there's something that's not on the side that you want ordering that we might be able to get for you if you either email matt or message me on the flory site i'll then have a word with matt and we'll see if we can get it for you because there is you know, obviously there's yeah we can't stock everything. We can't yeah. physically have you know. Yeah. Bum, we ain't got the space to stock it all. Plus, we ain't got the money to stock it all, really. So, yeah. but you know, it's, we try and stock good stocks. But yeah, we obviously there is stuff people want. So just shoot us a mail, and we'll see if we can get it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, there's one here. Just yeah. uh, hi guys. Can anyone point me in good online reference for British World War Two tankers uniform? I've searched and can't find anything that names the colours. Thanks in advance. Tanky colours? Uniforms? Um, it was khaki brown colour, wasn't it? The, the yeah, it's probably should, yeah. Um, I, something we're going to be stocking very soon. Uh, oh, God. Um, Pam's Racers. Yeah. Do them. Um, do the US uniform colours for tankers. The British, British tankers, Japanese tankers, US tankers and German Panzer. Yeah. Panzers. Panzer tankers. Panzer tanker. So, so, so. Yes. So that's the uh, next line that we're on about bringing in will be the Panzer Races line of paints. So. Yeah. And very soon, I think. Yes. Yes. They'll uh, be winning uh, their way. And also, AK do a set. I presume MIG do a set. Uh, uh, 
and I think Vallejo do a normal set on the model colour range to be honest but I definitely know they do it in Panzer Racers because I've got them and they're at work they're not here because I've just got my model colour range so yeah very good Cole, uh, Cole yeah. says it received his Mirage on the 28th and that's the same day he received the email yeah uh, maybe, yeah maybe the email that yeah, obviously slow then, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, no, it's um, yeah, I did because I know I wanted a, I think it was an Ettendard, um, and I'm waiting on some to come in. So I thought instead of you waiting for ages, I'll shoot you a message when they're in, and then if you still want it, you can um, we'll sort some out for you to get that. But yeah. Uh, question: Please tell me anything you know about the Eddard reboxing of the Hasegawa One Seventy Second B Twenty Six, and will we be stocking it, and do we have a release date? Uh, yes, we'll be stocking it. Yes, it's a fantastic kit. No, I haven't got a release date. Everybody go out and buy it. It'll be on pre-order actually. I'm going to get Andy to put it on pre-order because I know what price it is now, or a price for it. What was Sorry. The Eddard B26 Marauders being yeah, reboxed. Marauders. So, yeah, be a good kit. I think we should leave that. Leave what? Apparently, Mr. Hobby GT33, Mr. Spout. On the side, it says Mr. Sprout. I like that. Yeah. I, I'm, yeah. <laughs> There's not people buying them, is it? Everybody likes Sprouts. Everyone likes Sprouts. Sprouts aren't just for Christmas. It's your wind. <laughs> uh, are the Hurricanes from Armour Hobby? Yeah, was that part of another question that I missed? Mm. Oh, it's Armour Hobby, that's it. What did I say? Dora Wings? Yeah, oh, Dora Wings. There you go. Sorry, yeah. sorry, it's Armour Hobby ones, yeah. That's what I need a thing for. Armour Hobbies. Armour Hobby ones. Sorry, yeah. not Dora. To be honest, we could do one for Dora Wings as well. Yeah. Um, but no, it is Armour Hobbies, thank you. See, yeah. this is how my brain is today. It's completely <laughs> just frazzled. <laughs> it's overflowing, bless him. Yeah. And that's to answer Neil, no idea when this frog foot's coming out, because... Because it's out of China, isn't it? So I don't know. Couldn't answer that. And also, Kitty Hawk take forever to get to the UK. Yeah, they do. Like, yeah. We talk about a, show, a slow boat. I think it's on a pedal boat. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, seriously, we're it's like. It seems to me the UK is the last place to get Kitty Hawk kits on the planet. So, yeah, yeah not yeah. sure why, but we do definitely seem to think. Uh, Eduardo bringing out a 48 scale Lysander 3 soon. Will we be reviewing it? Yes, we will. We'll get it in. We've had that in anyway. It's the one we always have in stock. It's uh, the old yeah, Gabby the kit. standard one. Uh, standard kit. Also, they are bringing out a 132nd ME, ME or BF 108. Is it a BF? That one. <laughs> How comes he gets cups of tea brought to him? Is this like a, a, a pre planned thing? Yeah. There's the rest of us, you know. <laughs> Look, I haven't even got any dregs I can drink. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and he gets his company cup as well. No. Uh, question for Matt. Is the layer model, model colour good for airbrushing and would it be cost saving over model air? Yes. I would say it is and would. It's really designed for brush painting, but you can airbrush it. And as we've found out, it um, sprays phenomenally if you mix it 50 50 with leveling thinner. Yeah. It's brilliant. For to what be honest I've with you, I, I sprayed it donkeys years ago, and this would have been early, very early 2000s, because uh, I did a Draken and I needed the Swedish colours. And uh, yeah, talk about the paint that keeps giving. I think I had it thinned like 70%. And it covered beautifully. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it's one of those ones that you've got to really, really mix it. Not only on the bottle, if you can, uh, but also with your thinner. You know, quite important. Otherwise, it gets a bit clumpy. But yeah. uh, once you get a nice smooth mix. But again, a lot of that's my own problem because I do it in my colour cup. Not like Matt in a proper, you know. So <laughs> it is user <laughs> error probably with it. But I do say for a cost effective point of view, if you've just got those and you can get the colours you need, then yeah, definitely, because it will go a long, long way. Yeah, and obviously it will thin with their own acrylic airbrush thinners as well. So, um, but yeah, bang for book wise, you, you run with it because it's thick stuff in it. You don't need a lot to, no. for it to go a long way. Definitely not. 
Uh, 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 where are we? So, uh, Matt, will uh, will be taking pre-orders for the new Kinetic Aggressor 148 scale Hornet uh, as they're being sold on the AK website. Oh, I didn't even know that was that, did you? Yeah, it's Splinter, it's the same as mine. It's the one I did, but I did it the oh, other way around. Well, pre-order, it's in the store. We've had them for sale since last year. Mm. I haven't got any in stock. I, I don't, because we, we're struggling to get Kinetic at the minute. So, um, but yeah, it should, should be on site. Andy's going to have a look now and tell you. I am. And if it's not on the site, it should be. Hold on, we're going in. He's going in. I'm sure it's on there. No. No, it's not. No. 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 Did you do yours out of the box or special scheme? Me? Mine was Deckles. I, they were from not somewhere decals. else. I used right. the kit. I just did the... I did this one, did the yeah. hornet, and then I had Deckles for it from somewhere else. Ah, right. Okay. So, yes. Yes, then. I think they saw mine, thought how cool it looked, and then decided to do the box of it afterwards because loads of people think it is the kinetic kit and all the rest yeah. of it. But no, unfortunately, mine isn't, although it is because uh, if you have a quick skimmy at mine, this is exactly what you will get now. So, uh, do, do, do. come on, slow go. Uh, which was, where is it? Sorry, I used the C, the Charlie one. That's the one I used. <clears throat> so I did that one. And then, as I say, she came out like that. Oh, at least I know why that does that now. So, yeah, which I did ambush before they came up with it. Again, great kit. And I do believe the new one that they're doing now has got the better front end on it. A lot of people talk about this business of getting this thing. I didn't really have a problem with it, but apparently they've retooled the top part now. So the top windscreen goes in. It's what they call their gold series or whatever it is. Um, mm. And that's what it was. So yeah, I actually masked mine and all the bits to it. We did it old school and then went through the motions of doing it. Ah. So yes. Yeah, we can get that up on pre-order. Yeah. If uh, have people are interested. Hmm. Uh, Richard put up about his orders not arrived because he's probably stuck in Royal Mail. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, it has gone. Uh, Alan, shoot me a uh, email, please. And yeah, I would have thought it. I presume the kit's out. So yeah, it's the register we can get because I get it from the same place as Tamia. So that would be nice to add on if you if somebody wants. Yeah, look, my uh, BM order arrived today, nine days after being sent. There you go. This is pop luck in it. You know, we're, you're just going to have to sort of deal with it. I'm afraid it's horrible to say, but I'll tell you yeah, what's really weird. Today. Obviously, I shut down on Friday, my one, and the ones that I sent out though on Monday, while I was going through the tracking, I think about eighty percent of them have got them already yeah you know so as to say there is no right or wrong to anything because i thought originally it was a west country thing i was because it was john because clearly i have to go via john at some point and mm. um as we know he's a bit slow sometimes so uh, i was blaming him but clearly it's not it's obviously a universal thing mm. we had a message today saying that uh, royal mail are no longer doing saturday deliveries yeah i've but, had that as well yeah yeah that obviously shows you how when was the last time they didn't do Saturday deliveries? They're obviously no, short. The shows it. They're obviously overburdened with what they're getting through and the shorter staff. So they need to sort of try and cut it back somehow, aren't they? So they're stopping doing. But but wouldn't you think that I'd be cutting a day off would make it worse than actually yeah, putting if a day on? If a postman's got a route and he works five days, yeah, six days someone else has got to then fill in for a mantee. So they're not paying overtime, so they're not doing overtime, so they need to sort of, you know, claw it back somehow, don't they? So, yeah. The, only, um, the thing is, though, they're not showing the post office. You can still go and post on a Saturday, yeah. so it's still got yeah. to be collected, so it's still good in its system, so you're not mm -hmm. gaining them. Yeah, well, obviously, they haven't got yeah. enough men to do the routes, have they? So... But again, you know, as we were saying, we don't really need to keep going quite over it. They will get there when they get there. You know, you can see they're in the system. 
it's yeah, how long a bit of string is. Sometimes they're getting there literally next day. Uh, other times they're taking, well, forever. Yeah. So, yeah. Martin said just let him do his parcels and packets will still get done. Yeah. I'll, have to look, I'll look into yours, Richard, and dig out the tracking and find out where it is or, you know, for all, it, it could be lost in the post. That's the other problem. You know what Again, I mean? That is, and do you know what? The thing is, I because obviously we were getting stuff and I was getting a lot of heat where people said, yeah. where's my order? Where's my order? And to be honest, I refunded a few people. Uh, and then to be honest, I think all but one has now turned up. So yeah. um, it was one of those things that when you go online, you can't do anything for 25 working days until after it officially goes missing yeah so and it's like right okay so you're sort of stuffed and that's why i ended up refunding loads of orders because people are saying where is it and getting you know as i say very annoyed uh and that was the why i made the decision to close the store because i couldn't afford to keep losing stuff and i yeah. don't believe it's being lost because i haven't lost anything in the uk for donkey's years it's just in the system that was the trouble yeah and just write that order number down because i ain't got pen or paper in here Richard and then I'll, I'll look into it and we've done but yeah I mean like like Phil says and me getting heat about it and it's like well we're sending them out and they're in the system and they're out it's out of our hands completely out of our hands but for when you get them hmm. um, and I think David's put look suppliers getting blamed for the postal service not fair on the suppliers it's a fair point because I say we's not you know we are we have posting stuff out and like I say, some of you have like, took seven days, somebody's took nine, some gets it in a couple of days and it's just, you know, I think it's just, just what's happening. It um, is. Yeah. Unfortunately, I, you know, I think I can understand why people get upset about it, but at the end of the yeah. day, you know, we, we do everything we can, you know, and it's not like we're sitting on orders for weeks and then deciding them to send them out or anything. Yeah. But the, the heat I was getting last week just got to the point where, do you know what? Don't need this, you know, and that's why I shut it down. And now, unfortunately, Matt's getting it. So yeah. it, it's one of them things where it's, you know, it's literally out of my hands. There's nothing I can do. And you do, you get people sometimes in the email two or three times a day saying, where's my order? And it's like, well, I, you know, what am I literally, there's nothing I can do. So that's the bit where I was just refunding people. Yeah. Right. Anyway, moving on to happier times. Uh, yeah. Have you got any info on the Hobby Boss 135th scale Jackal or Coyote? No, I haven't to be honest. I'll tell you what might be, I did order it, I don't know if it's coming, but the Husky, hmm. um, I, I ain't got many, I'll be I'll be honest, I just tagged it onto the AK order because they do it and nobody's got it over in this country, but again, <laughs> just anything that's coming out of China is no idea really on, um, on time scale or when it's going to be here, you know, again, because we've obviously got to wait for the distributors to get it in stock before we can get it yeah so we're relying on certain people over here for for their stocks to come in um mm -hmm. and i know one who's the hobby boss sort of importer yeah he's concentrating on other things and model kits i think yeah shall we say yeah no i to i know where you're going with that yeah one. yeah um, again i think so the biggest problem is also is um talking to a relative of mine who's in the know with all of this stuff the problem they've got is that a lot of companies worldwide are cancelling orders so mm. you know the manufacturers now are sitting on stock uh, that was originally allocated for other things and it's screwing up everybody's production runs and things like that as well i don't know how affected it is in the model kit world as well yeah. uh, but in the manufacturing one of the biggest problems we got out at the moment is that the the factories are, are like don't know quite what to do because they're having orders cancelled on them completely because obviously with the economic turn down of the world everybody's scared about buying stuff now so that's another knock on to everything. But apparently the th factories are being thrown out of whack now because there's orders being cancelled and uh, they're trying to filter through which are the, the ones that are going to go ahead and they can do. They've got the gear for. And it, again, it's one of those where it's like it's shockwaves going through the system and it's going back and forward now. Everyone thinks China's out of this now and everything's back to normal. But there's reverbs, especially for obviously from the US and the bigger economies as it's going back through. And in yeah. our little world with scale modelling, it does get affected by it because it can affect things going on to ships being transported and dates like that you know it is it's one of those things until this really proper settles down it, we're grabbing stock from where we can get it at the moment i think to be honest the the, the world has changed yeah it's going to change and it's going to be like it for a, 
well, until this has even got find a cure for it, we yeah. get an immune system to it. Mm -hmm. Or the other one, there was three, weren't there? So yeah. until this sort of happens, this is going to be the how we how we carry on for a bit. Yeah. I think Just I'm not saying the lockdown's it's... going to last. They've got to lift the lockdown for the economy, but the the effect of it is going to be a lot more long term than than we think it probably going to be. Yes, uh, especially with economies and stuff. So I think just until things settle down again, and obviously the the confidence in the market needs to grow. Now the funny thing is, I think the confidence in the scale modelling market at the moment is through the roof. But yes. I can guarantee, and me and Matt have had this discussion as well. At yep. some point in the summer, when everyone's allowed out, it's going to fall off. So what we don't want to do is then buy tons of stuff and got no cash in the bank as well. So we're having to be a little bit, you know, when's it going to stop? Because obviously traditionally in the UK, we call it the cliff. It normally happens last month uh, mm. and the market drops off and we go quite quiet. And that's when we do all the shows and all the rest of it in the summer. And then obviously you get to November, the cold weather, the dark nights, people go back to doing the hobbies and modeling and it goes up again. But there's a definite dip. You can see it in the figures straight away. And just through people coming to the site and stuff like that, it's very, very noticeable. But this year it's all going to go out the window, but you've got to allow for where that is somewhere. So yeah. again, it's weird things this year that we're having to think about. We've never thought about before. You know, normally yeah. we just carry on and go through and you know you might not get a, a kit for whatever reason might be delayed but you don't think it might not come in because it could be you know anywhere and as i said you know we're hopeful but most companies will weather this through you know we've had various companies shaking shall we say and we're not sure about a few if they are around just still or not things like that which we've covered before but we're hoping now that you know at least everyone's going to get an idea where they're going and can move on from it yeah uh what do we got uh one for the team uh mm. which decal set uh one that does not exist yet uh or that is very hard to find would you like to have and for what model and why crikey jeez jesus that's quite a i tell you what i have actually got one which i think and i think i spoke to andy about this on saturday mm. right the hind that's just come out the alien yeah. skin you did, didn't you? Absolutely stunning for that. Actually, it's been done, hasn't it? In 48? No, in 72nd. Now I'm on about 48. Well, you're going to have to paint it by hand. Yeah. <laughs> God, yeah. yeah. Air, airbrush it. <laughs> somebody, no, somebody will bring that out. That'll come out because it's such an iconic hind. I think somebody's got to do it. Yeah. But there have been some, you know, like the Czech Heinz. Oh, done yeah, some yeah. There is some beautifully Steve. done Heinz over the years because obviously um, they did the Eagle, wasn't it? It was very famous as well yeah. with all the feathers. Yeah. yeah. So. Um, but I think that'll look a really, really, really nice one. So. But again, that's very complex. You think of a Heinz being like a bus, it ain't. It's got some curves on that thing to try and yeah, get your yeah. decals to wrap around all that lot. Mind you, in, in uh, let's say I haven't seen it yet. I haven't uh, had my review sample, but you might hope it's not covered in rivets then, because it'd be easy to deco over if it is smooth. <laughs> mm. Yeah, can you imagine raised rivets. If it's raised that, rivets all over it, that'd be a nightmare trying to get that to go down all over it. Yeah. Um, do you know what? I've I can't think of anything from my side of things where the decals haven't sort of been done for it um as i say because on my heart is with sort of modern or cold war jets they're pretty much all done i can't think of one that isn't um because even splinter i've always wanted to do splinter and i know there's marsets out for it so when that one come out that was actually quite a nice one and thought yeah that, that's a good one to do um but I can't actually think of anything where there's not something available or I couldn't do it or make it. Hmm. Um, the hind one's a classic example, though. Doing the bird feather one, the eagle and alien, because there's no way you could ever do that by hand. Um, so, but I can't actually think of a kit or anything I've got down in here which I haven't got decals for it or want to do or something like that because most things now you can get most of the manufacturers have tackled it in one shape or form or something else so yeah good question but i can't think of anything off the top of my head 
Andy. No, I don't know what to think of it off the top of my head either. But like I said, me and Matt were talking about the behind the other day. Mm. Uh, yeah, they're classic ones, but someone is sure, sure to do them, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah, I've got a feeling somebody actually did hand paint the bird one, the eagle hind. I've got yes. a feeling somebody did it to the 35th scale one years yeah, ago one. Yeah, um, and did a beautiful one. job on it. Yeah. So, uh, hmm. Just before it flicks off our chat, are you doing a video build for that 2001 thing? You've been recording it? It is. I have been recording it. It's coming along. Oh. First part will be up on Friday. There you go. So that will keep, keep them happy. Yes. Probably it's very... And modular isn't it there's lots of bits that are all the same like you said yeah so you can't yeah so obviously i'm not going to show you how to do all 60 containers because most of you watch doing it live anyway so um but yeah it um it literally is all of this being assembled and done but obviously if it's joint things i only show doing one and then not the others but to be honest i was filming this morning i did this section and we did this and we're halfway through doing that and i'm literally about to show you about doing the second side probably after the show i'll do that one and that completes pretty much the construction front and rear i've got to do the antenna array uh, in the middle but all the other stuff's done so i am hopeful by the weekend i'll get this thing done and it'll be together and then it'll be painting and fun things to do so yes right i've got one here because um Rob's asking about Great Wall Hobbies kits. Yes. We have got a source. It's not in the UK because I don't think anybody's importing them in the UK. So we're getting them out of Germany. Um, and they haven't got any stocks of them. So I can't get any Great Wall Hobbies kits in because he's on about the new flanker with the Russian Knight scheme. Mm -hmm. And I can't do a pre order on them either. Um, oh, God, that's just flipped because somebody's put a big picture up. Um, because I don't know what quantities I can get. When we could get them in the UK, I could say, right, I need a carton of them, a carton of them, a carton of them. I can't do that out of Germany. Because, you know, I don't know what they carry. So watch this space. We will be getting them back in, but I am going to pre warn everybody now. They are expensive. Hmm. They are very expensive. The price has gone well up on them. So that's like the F-15s, the, the SU-35s. Even the MiG-29s and some of their older stuff is very expensive. So we won't be keeping massive stocks in of them for that reason, because obviously it's money tied up for us. Um, so, yeah. Okay, one from Gordon says, Great review on the Tamiya Zero. Uh, this morning, Phil, is in danger of making me want to move up a scale now. Go and get one. Any of them. <laughs> They're very nice. We haven't got any, by the way, just so typical. But yes, we will get some more in, I reckon, Matt. What's that, sorry, mate? The zeros. Yeah, I'm going to uh, speak to uh, Ian about it and get some more ordered. Like I said, it takes about three months. Yeah. In just... normal time. In this time, I've got no idea. Yeah, that's it. But yeah, I'll probably order, because what do they come in boxes of three, don't they? I'll probably get another three in, I think. Yeah. So I know I've been messaged about one anyway, so... But what, I, as I say, lots of people have asked me this morning about when am I going to start it. Um, as I say, I've got this. I've got another large project, which is my sort of secret squirrel project. You'll get to know probably next week. And then I'm doing that bloody airliner for my sins, which is, <laughs> I'll be in there with Bondo, Car Primer, yeah, Scaffolding. I don't know zero's that thing. Zero next year then. Yeah, so uh, I've got that on the go. I was then going to plan on doing a vehicle um so i want to slide that in there somewhere then i'll get on with it so my summer's pretty taken plus if i've got another one that i want to do as well up there so yeah at the moment it's one of those i've got all these ones i want to get on and do um and it will come along after that but i, I will clear a little bit of room for doing that one but yes definitely don't, don't worry about the vehicle build right i've <laughs> covered that for you and it's a nice simple <laughs> kit Right, and okay. It's, it, it's in this thing that's coming to you, so oh, you'll right. see. It's in my little care package. Your little care package. Great. It's in with that. Cool. Uh, what is the downside of pre-mixing your airbrush paints in the original bottle? Um, loss of thinner, or does the paint go off? I don't... If you get a lot of people, and they'll do the thing where you get your Tamiya pot, and they'll just top up to the top and then shake it because that's pretty much as it is um 
I think really at the end of the day, if you're going to be thinning your, your bottles already to be able to use for airbrushing, you don't have any choice then. It might as well gone with somebody else who's got a pre-thinned one i.e. you can't make it thicker so for instance white i always spray my first coat quite thick my second and third coats very very thin so that way i've got the option in the bottle so i think it's better option to do it um out of the bowl keep your paints as they are and pour in but all of that said i will say because somebody's going to call me out on it clearly um when i finish painting if it's that color i will tip it thin as an all back into the bottle and i've never known them to go off or anything else like that yet so but for point of view of paint going off and stuff as long as your lids on properly i don't think you'll actually have a problem with it ah i've got a question from roger hmm is there a difference between self-leveling thinner and the other blue blue bottle thinner from mr Dobby? i think it just means a normal mr color thinner as regards to which paint to thin the thin is the same but obviously one of them's got a retarder in there that makes it more of a satin glossy finish yeah so you can thin all the paints with both the thinners it's going to make no difference exactly. it's just one's got the retarder in it which is the self the, the leveling thinner if you try thinning a matte paint for example xf86 with sub leveling thinners you'll end up with a satin finish rather than a matte finish but if you use the blue bottle the normal thinners it will be a matte finish and if you use rapid thinners, blimey. Yeah, then it'll be yeah. like proper yeah, dead flat. Yeah. And Quick tip yeah, yeah. for you, really, just saying that. If you, you know, obviously people talk about weathering uh, and what surface to weather on and stuff like that. That is my go-to way of doing it. And to be honest, it'll probably be the same on this. So I'll use flat with self-leveling thinners, which is a nice smooth satin finish. It's great for the wash because the wash has got enough bite to stay on there, but you can get it all off if you need to. And the same with the oils. If you're using like washes and things like that, it's a very even when you put it on there. It will track and it will go. It's not like a flat and it'll stay very localized. Um, so it will go off, but it's got enough grip and bite in the surface, the texture, to grip it to be able to blend it and work with it without it just wiping away. And uh, Richard just put, does Tammy LP like self leveling thinner? Yes. Yes, definitely. Yes, loves does. it. Loves it, loves it. To be honest with you, any lacquer paints likes leveling thinner. So Attacker, Guns, Tamiya, probably, even though it's really thin, MRP. You can thin them all with it. So, cool. Yeah. Question, no rush, but uh, Hasegawa do a fabulous 112 scale motorcycle kits. You can get the GSXR 750 kit, please. No. Don't. <laughs> We can't get Hasegawa, can we? We're sure yeah, Hasegawa, I must admit, we used to have a, a source, uh, but that has gone. So, unfortunately, it's a bit tricky. Can we not get them via Germany? No, they don't do them. Oh, right, okay, scrap that. Um, so yeah, sorry on that one. It's a bit tricky as getting those in. Yeah, I mean, there's still a trickle of Azagawa coming in, but we don't pick what comes in. I can't say I, I need these. Uh, yeah, you we know, can't I dictate need, what we want. I can't dictate what yeah. it is. It just comes in, and if we like it, I pick some up. And if you know, it, it is what it is. I'm afraid. Yes. Uh, just better answer this to John. Does self leveling thing and work with acrylic paints? Kind of. It's oh, this is a sticky one. <laughs> it, isn't it depends. And it, it depends whose it is. Yes. Try it before you buy. Yeah, try it in a cup. You know, have a go in a, a little cup. Hello. Um, to see uh, what how it goes. At the end of the day, if it's got a flammable symbol on it, i.e. guns, Tamiya, yes, yeah. no problem at all. If it hasn't, then you want to test it. Theoretically, we've done testing with it when we were half drunk one night, all sat here. <laughs> they were bored so they started getting me paint out of everywhere trying to thin it and see what you could do with it and it turns out that self-leveling thinners is brilliant but normal thinners doesn't work the same as guns leveling thinners that's our little caveat to this because we found it works really really well but other thinners don't work quite as well even though they're lacquer based yeah. and the reason why i never posted all that up that we did was because people then also mentioned that different colors in the same paint range yeah was yeah. the reason thin differently depending on what thinner you were using yeah if you're trying to use leveling thinners on we tried it on all sorts in with life color 
Everything. Everything. Mm. We tried. We did model color, life color, yeah. Revel acrylic, um, Mig acrylic. Was it or AK acrylic? One of them. Yeah. Vallejo. I we tried. Them. Them. Yeah, it was all sorts. That I I yeah, would go with the safe option of just thin it with acrylic thinner. Yes. I think that's the safest thing to do rather than, you know, if you want to experiment yourself and see if it works, that's fine. But obviously we're now on YouTube to God knows how many people are watching. I'm not going to say to them. Yeah. 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 Go and finish wheel having thinner in you. What, whatever acrylic paint you've got and it'll be fine. And then it turns to chewing gum. No. To be honest Try. with you, the best investment you can make is just like Andy did. Didn't you, Andy? You bought some of these the other day. Go off and yeah, buy yeah. yourself some cheap shot glasses off the internet, you know, off of eBay or Amazon. I don't like those hard plastic ones because the uh, lacquer thinners can melt those. I, I normally, if you go for the medical dispensing ones, which are like a soft plastic and they've got like measurements for dispensing medicines and what have you, mm -hmm. they're like a different plastic and they're softer and it's they don't, it doesn't melt with their lacquer thinners. I would use that. Model. Or a dish yeah. or anything. These little dishes, these little boring dishes are brilliant. They're easy to clean. Um... That's good because mine's dirty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're easy to clean, and uh, and obviously you, I think ten comes in a pack. So yeah, you know you get a pack of ten like this, and yeah. Then you can use mine. But the thing is, yeah, if you what you want to do, going back to track gear, is just test it. Get a tiny bit of yeah. paint, tiny little bit of thinners, pop it into something you can see what's going on, i.e. not your colour cup or your airbrush. Have a mix with it, see how it goes. Let it stand for a few minutes to have a look at it, see if it goes gritty, see if it clumps up, see if it stays smooth. What you're looking for is when you tip it on its side, it's a nice, smooth, even paint. If it's going gritty, if it's just turned to thinners, if it's separating, then you know it's not working. Because all it's going to do is gum up your airbrush and cause you trouble. Yeah. Saying that, I'm just going to do a quick on test while you're lot of chatting. Go on then, we'll watch you. I'll do that. Well, yeah, I'll put the camera on you. Oh, hold on. God, you've got all moved again. I did say, didn't I, that I would try it and I forgot. So. Hold on, I'll just put Matt on screen because the guys have all moved around a bit. Hold on. There he is. Right, you watch Matt. I'll read out the questions. Uh, yeah. uh, do, 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 do. What, in your opinion, is the best F16 in 148 scale? That's easy. Tamiya. Tamiya's. And also, there's only one kit you really want to get as well. If you get the Block uh, 2532 kit, which is the Air National Guard F16, it comes with all the different versions in it, in the box as well. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Let me stop. It's not available anymore. It's not available anymore. It's discontinued. Bastards. Phew. Good. Well, anyway, so that's what you want. Anyway, have a look for that. It's a shame because that one, you could do any of the versions. You could do the big mouth, the small mouth, and the different Pratt and Whitney, and the general electric engines in it as well. But scrap that. But anyway, that's what you want. Tamiya, all the way through. Best kit you can get. That's the aggressive one, isn't it? The, uh... Well, it's the Air National Guard one, isn't it? I think. Yeah. No, it's the aggressive one, isn't it? Is it the aggressive yeah. one? Yeah. Yeah, the aggressive one. That's what the one you would have wanted. Um, yeah. But it's, as I say, where's my kits anyway? You guys been going through my stash again? It's got Moo, Moo Cow on front of it. Yes, the one with Moo Cow, which I've got somewhere. Have you stolen my F16? No. <laughs> like seriously, where's my F16 <laughs> from your stash? You auctioned it. I've got one. No, I wouldn't have done that because it was half built. I don't know, no, we haven't had that. Oh, right, okay. Anyway, I have got one here somewhere. Um, right, okay, so both my orders right. from PM and Flory Models uh, arrived within a couple of days. Thanks for your hard work, guys. Oh, thank you. There you go, Nick. Yay! 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 Right, let's do a brush test. Yes, Jeremy, get the other one as well. Get the Tamiya kit. Don't buy anybody else's, honestly. It's one of the best kits out there. Is that on the Hey, this is unthinned, yeah, this is just straight out. I've just wet my brush a little bit with water. So, where are we on camera? I've got no primer on this, so, you know, we normally would. We'll see what happens. Nice coverage. Mm. That is good coverage, actually. Mmm, this could be good. 
Mm. I did read that. Um, oh, it's the wrong shade of green. The US are going to start doing Block 3. Sorry, uh, Mark 3 F6, F18s, aren't they? With, uh, they? with conformal fuel tanks, yeah. Apparently, all the second generation Mark, um, F18s have now finished. Yeah, it's the new one, isn't it? It has a yeah. full um, touchscreen thing on it. It's what they're putting it to Germany, isn't it? Yeah, they've got conformal, the built in fuel, yeah, the saddle oh, tanks. That's the one, yeah, on there. Ooh, I tell you what, that brush is really quite nice. That's mm -hmm. it, we want to scrap everything. We're moving now to Blue Line Attacker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're all going back to brush painting. That's brush painting. Yeah, hand painting everything. See what it dries like. To be honest, it's something we're toying and stocking anyway, this, isn't it? Hmm. So. Yeah. We'll see we'll what it is. The Panzer to... Ace is next, and then we've got a, the next paint line could be this one in anyway, so. Yeah. Interesting. Mm. Need to be talking about why you're doing it. What about me? Which brush stroke I'm doing? I'm doing vertical brush strokes. Yes. Don't forget, Tamiya do all the F16s in uh, separately. So they do the block 2532. They do the block 52 CJ kit. They do all the different F16s anyway. It's just that if you got the aggressor one with Mukau on the front, it came with all the ones in there. So that was the nice thing with it. So, shall we see what airbrush is like? So I've got their own thin as look, just to prove I'm not using anybody else's. It's just to put it in a drop of bottle. Sure. I'm not going to add any flow improver or anything. So we'll give it a squirt. See that? Proper mm -hmm. measuring that. Yeah. We'll see what happens. Have you got here. a clean airbrush for it to go through? Uh, probably not. Mm. I'm going to really put it through the test because I've got a cheap knockoff airbrush here. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put it through. All right. Well, let's just do that. I'll just do a couple more yeah. questions so we yeah, can. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. That, so yeah. we've got uh, hi, gents. Thanks for all your great shows. Loving the tits and company. Question: Do you think we'll ever see a 148 scale SA330 Puma kit? We discussed True. this. I wish we would because we could do on 70 second. There's a few options, but in 48, there's nothing, and it's a shame because it's a very well represented aircraft. So, yeah. Underrepresented. Underrepresented aircraft, yes. But it's represented it's very well around the world. Loads of people use yeah. them. Yep, they do. Roger says, have you seen the AK Glue YouTube video? The English is weird and funny. Oh, it's because they have, um, like, the computer um, translator on, don't they? Oh, right. That's how they do it. It's it is, yeah. It's good. It's very oh, just, We discussed it before, weren't it? It's just is it just not? It's just another another glue, isn't it? Oh no, it'd be the best glue ever, clearly. And everyone will have to run out and buy it because that's what they do. Be another bloody same thing, rebottled. <laughs> you no, cynic! Then... You cynic! You. <laughs> David, we were talking about the Tammy Ref sixteen, not a. Tamir F18. Tamir don't do an F18, that's why. Why don't they do an F18? Because everybody else has done them. <laughs> and I like Pranjit do... was saying about it, wouldn't hey, it? They won't do I... it if anybody else does it. The thing is, hey, why are they never um, downsized their Phantom? Wow, this is it. They I know a lot of people in. do Phantoms. But... What do you think? The only option you've got for a 30 second Phantom is that, the old Rebel ones. Oh look, we've got spray in action. Go on then. Oh, he says, hold on. Wind my needle in a bit. You're going to have to talk through this because we can't see shit. <laughs> you can't see anything? Well, we can, but it's a bit... Yeah. Sorry. Okay. So, no flow improver, just air thinners. I don't know what the mix is because I've just mixed it, but... Yeah, that's all right. 
That's good, good coverage, really good coverage. Mm. Can you see? Can you see? Yeah, no, it looks good. So, I'll do this side panel with it. So, give it a bit of a light coat and then I'll give it a full coat like that for off. Well, that, I tell you what, that coverage is absolutely amazing. And it's dry nice and flat. I say I can't do really a um, without primer in it. I can't do an adhesion test because I've got a feeling it's not going to be brilliant. If I'm honest, because um, this is just on straight bare plastic. But that is quite impressive. Mm hmm. Fred said there was one that looked interesting. It looked plastic to form texture and armor. You are. Again, because the compressor's just kicked in, sorry. I'm ready to go open. I, I need a bamber, obviously. Roger was saying there was one that looked interesting. It melts plastic to form texture and armour. All right, OK. Or you could use tanner extra thin and a, th and a thumb print. Mm. Mm. Try some of that, actually. I'm just why we need linen. try some of this. Alex says he's unsubscribed because you paint on the spruce. Yeah, I don't blame you, Alex. I would as well. <laughs> See, I'm using a, a crappy airbrush. I don't think that's too shoddy. The guys in chat who are talking about the F-16s, I take it which, which block to buy, they are all the same. There's just differences for what you want to do. So, obviously, the block is... Normally, the difference one is between the, uh, the 50s and the 2s, uh, would obviously be the engine in it if it's a general electric or the Pratt and Whitney, big mouth or small mouth F16. So, it's personal choice on which one. The kits are all exactly the same. But if you can get hold of the aggressor one, get that, you get all the options in it. But it's not available normally at the moment. Right. Hold on. Yeah, Richard Matt's uh, left handed is a bit he is a bit weird. Yeah, yeah I am a superior. A I am in the superior race. He's a freak. Um, <laughs> I'm an artiste. <laughs> right then, my verdict on that as a quick just a quick contest. Yeah. Is absolutely actually I'm really impressed. Cause that's the first time I've ever done that, especially with the blue line. I've used the red line a few times, but the blue line stuff, the brushable one. It's brushed on really nice. The coverage is really good. And actually, airbrush is good as well. Hmm. Coverage is amazing, to be honest. Ooh. Any tip dry or? No, none. None at all. No. It's very similar, that, to spraying the life colour that I painted on Sunday when I painted me um, M51 tank. Hmm. And I didn't get any tip dry with that with its own thinner. So I wonder, I presume there must be some sort of... I, I'm, Thinking the way that foams up a bit because it's got bubbles in it. Yeah. Can you see? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. There must be some sort of flow improver in it. I would have thought. Uh, Dilutes without any adhesion resistance versus ability. That's in French. You can't read French very well. Is it thin with leather thinners? I don't know. I'm not trying that. We're doing the acrylic test. I'm not doing a lacquer test with it. I'll try that off camera when it comes up my airbrush. <laughs> <laughs> But it's brushed on really nice as well. I'm really impressed actually by that's brushed on. So uh, dry pretty well as well. If you can see on camera, but you can't really see very well, can you? After, I'll send you a photo, Phil, and you can put it up. Yes. I'll do that now while I've got my thing, and I'll send you one through Messenger. Yeah. 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 Uh, there's a couple of questions coming of that now. So anyway, uh, Martin says, do you have any plans to get the single Hitaka orange line in the PM store? We do. We already do. We have done okay. since day one. We carry the lot. We have them all in here as individual bottles. And this is them here. So literally, if you just go in, I've got it. What have we got it set up, Andy? One to what? Uh, on the two. numbering thing there you go it's number one to 250 and then from number 251 to two to 704 that isn't all the way through there is gaps in that for everyone think jesus has a lot of paint um but yes they're all in there and we do the sets as well so you say you've got your sets up here and individuals of the orange line 
The other colours, like Matt's just stating now, we're getting in now the blue line to have a check on that. We're not sure if we can get the blue line of singles, can we? Yeah, we can, yeah. So we can get blue line singles. So if we gonna, we'll play with it, because he's going to send me some down as well. We'll have to see what it's like, and then we'll make a decision if we're going to carry that or something else. To be honest, mate, I am proper happy with that. Hmm. Oh, oh, sorry, I'm going to have a, a bit more of a play with it, because I don't want to just jump to a straight conclusion, but, um, yeah. I've just sent you the thing through on your phone. Hmm. It's not going to play to uh, shows again, is it? You what, sorry? So not more paid to look to shows. It could be, mate. Yeah, yeah. it could be. I'm just thinking, we're, well, we're then discussion with Phil, because we were thinking of doing the red line, weren't we? Yeah. Yes. But this is, seems a bit more sensible, because you've obviously got the option of brush painting or thinning thinning to airbrush, rather than it's just straight, you know, ready for airbrush, so they say. So, yeah. Good, that. Is it as thick as, say... Vallejo white top. No, it's a bit thinner than that. It's definitely a bit thinner than Vallejo white top because that is pretty just a what blob of pigment <laughs> really that comes out. But um, it, it's, I say the coverage on it is brilliant for brush painting. Here we go. So it's it's sideways. I think I can't, box, you sent it sideways, not me. I can't move it. Can't you twist it round? No. no. <laughs> I'll have to send you a better picture. <laughs> Give, send us Just a... to work out which one. Right, the bottom half of this panel here. Right. That one. Yeah. On yours is the brush painted bit. Right. And then I airbrushed, I airbrushed that top bit. And obviously this one's been airbrushed here. Okay, so panel. that's all airbrushed. That's the bit <laughs> you hand painted. That's the, the bit. Yeah, and then to panel. hand painted. With a minute bit of water, what was on my brush. Right. Okay. And it's dried perfectly flat. I think, you know, with a bit more thinning, you could probably paint that without brush marks. Because I have got some, but I think another coat, you could probably eliminate that. Mm -hmm. And I say it's airbrushed absolutely flawless, to be honest. And the guys are saying you should try it with uh, leather and thinners. No. <laughs> Not today. And Trevor says, any official word on wind not wings yet? Nothing at all. No, nothing. No, 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 no. Uh, guys are talking down here about obviously the things they would do. So you can use Tamiya acrylics with lacquer thinners. Yes, you can. Because yes, Tamiya is alcohol based, you see. Uh, just like the guns Aquatis range. They're not a true acrylic because they're alcohol based. So they will thin with lacquer paints. Ooh, have you seen Lee's question? Yeah, I was looking at that. <laughs> Blimey. Has anybody on the site built Revels 178 Fairy Rotodyne kit? I've dug mine out of the stash and fancy building it in flight with electric powered blades for real prop blur. <clears throat> Might be another COVID. I think that really counts as a COVID build. 1990s yeah. kit. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. I've got to say, I have had the Airfix kit once before because they did one. It's a weird looking aircraft yeah see why it never sort of made production great idea but once it absolutely just deafeningly noisy and that's why it got sort of canned off um but interesting it's an interesting thing to see definitely what are you two after it's too early for dinner get out <laughs> it's well too early, well too early. apparently they were saying um stuart says about painting by hand with that stuff use a bigger brush goes down yeah nice. i know I'm, I'm i'm just it's why i had to hand in front of me really was yes. uh, whatever i've just used it's only in it what a number mm -hmm. trump double zero knowing me i was just using it for weathering yeah uh, to 10. sorry a few questions on here so phil says he's been making the fx wellington uh and i seem to have gotten some white marks over the decals using micro set and sole and humbral acrylic gloss varnish any idea of how to get rid of it? I think you'll find that's probably the microsole being a mild acid has eaten your humbral acrylic gloss varnish because that's what it does um, and it can give you a, a white mark. Your best thing to be honest with you is to very very lightly sand it 
with a polishing one if you've got shameless plug but if you've got a green and white one one of them works an absolute treat with it so just give it a very light rub with the actual green side and then polish it slightly with the white side if it's still there once you've polished it or you've got some marks in it re-gloss it again but the chances are it's where the uh, the acids because it's mild acid has attacked the actual gloss coat um, it has a habit of doing it with future if you put it on too thick as well you get like a, a tide mark or a ring around your decal a lot of that is where it's it's etching physically etching into the clear coat uh, that can be got rid of simply by giving it another coat of future over the top so Just, but, while yeah. you're on that you know um which ones which because i can never remember which ones the <laughs> is this is the set the one you put on first and the soul the after all the yeah the soul's one? the uh, the last one the red one yeah because you um you said before it's like don't put it on thick yeah thin just coats. a really thin coat yeah and leave it in it rather than i think what happens as well is as i say because i've had it happen to me loads of times and it's that thing sometimes you think oh, i'll give it a load and let it sink in but as it mm. evaporates i think the acid gets concentrated yeah you know that's why they smell of vinegar because they've got a mild acid in there it's the enzymes in it that break down the the tension the, the and the decal which makes it go soft which then you know it is better to your model but i think sometimes and we're all guilty of it you put a load on and then it like you know shrinks back because it's obviously concentrating and then that eats in so and that's right. the thing i've got a theory then because obviously um i'm a vinegar lover not. yes have you ever tried actually watering some proper vinegar down and do you know it? what i for years have thought about just getting some white wine vinegar wine something else like that yeah. and trying that because i can't if you sniff especially the soul yeah um it smells just like vinegar it you is, know? It, yeah because i hate it because i don't like vinegar the smell of it or anything so i know no it's not the soul no it's the, the set set, it's set, the smells, set, of set smells of vinegar yeah Whew, that's yeah. just proper vinegar you'd love it come on deep whips <laughs> That's how oh, you I make Matt you talk. Know. You pin him down and feed him salt vinegar crisps. He'll yeah. give you whatever you want. <laughs> yeah. A kick in the um, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, the the blue one just smells of vinegar, some mild acid, and then obviously the uh, the micro soul has got whatever the other one is in it. Um, so yeah, but Wait. normally it's just where it's it's etched into your clear coat. Um, clear used to be a nightmare for it. Uh i think everybody should now run into their kitchens pull out the white wine vinegar and try it you try it see what it does yeah see what happens you well, know, you posh i haven't be... got white wine vinegar i've just got sarsens or whatever it is the brown oh, proper, malt, <laughs> proper malt vinegar. <laughs> for me chips <laughs> you no know actually no white wine vinegar it's it is malt vinegar i don't like yeah some of the vinegars I'm all right with. It's malt vinegar. So you're right with balsamic, though, are you? I love balsamic vinegar. I was going to say, because I've been out to yeah. dinner with you and you've been dipping around in that like a good one. Yeah, no, balsamic's <laughs> fine. Yeah, I, I, it's malt vinegar I don't like the smell of. or anything. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Bro, it just gives me acid just thinking about it. Never <laughs> mind having any vile stuff. <laughs> uh, like, they're saying, it's so weird to see Matt uh, hand-painting left-handed <laughs> and airbrushing left-handed. As I say, he's a man <laughs> of many talents. I tell you what, do you know what? Because obviously Nathan's left-handed, and, mm. oh, and obviously I have. But you know, when I'm watching him, he, he looks weird to me. Yeah, he looks really awkward and gangly, and in anybody left-handed who's doing stuff, he just looks really odd. Yes, definitely. Uh, there was another one here. Question: uh, What compressor does Matt have? It's nice and quiet. <laughs> I have Bill's old one. It's got oh, my old 610. 610 See? Four max. Yeah, what you I'm need the future. That. And he's just got rid of his. Hello. <laughs> uh, there was another one here. Beginner's question. That was it. Uh, do you need to wash your sprues before building your model? To be honest, not these days. As I said before, in the old days when they used to be covered in release agent and stuff, sometimes some of the, the lesser companies, not saying Mobius is, but they can be a bit that way you feel it if you feel your sprues and you're thinking that feels a bit yeah then it might be worth giving them a wash um but again if you're painting with acrylics um especially water-based acrylics then obviously you might have reactions because the release agent uh can well ruin your paintwork quite frankly but if you're using lacquers it's not so much of a biggie but 20 years ago yes you know it used to be the thing because they used to be covered in it uh but modern kits it's not really a factor anymore i don't even know what they use because you don't seem to get release agent like you did yeah i don't know um david's asked uh, he, he posted a picture earlier on about the uh, 
14D Grim Reapers. It says, do they really have a two-tone colour scheme on the nose? And what it showed a picture of the, the Tamiya instructions. Yeah, they do. They have a three-tone camo F14s in theory. So it's Maybe. like where's his picture right on the top yes side. they do that's that's quite correct it's light ghost gray and then dark ghost gray on the nose and then on the back of the tomcat they have it as that was it 327 fx 36327 i call it tomcat blue because i don't know any other aircraft that's painted that color and they just have it over the back of the aircraft in when they're in the fleet and they're being sprayed all over the place it's a bit haphazard that demarcation line shall we say it can be anywhere because they'll just spray it for anti-corrosion and you tend to lose where it is uh with everything else that's why if you look at tomcats they've got that really light blotchy you know touch up work that's because they're using not actually the dark ghost gray they're using light ghost gray and just touching it in with it and that's why you get that fantastic color contrast for all the weathering uh, and anti-corrosion work but that is true i've got a drop in the wall picture there of a not really see it or not yes it's definitely blotchy and horrible and yeah yes. same with f16s as well they're um Three tone, aren't they originally? And yeah, then... the original ones were three tone, but again, I think when they make it out from the factory, brand new, they tend to go two tone at that point. I don't think they do it three tone when they're. I could be wrong. I'm not too up on the F16 to be honest. Um... Right, I've got a question. Um, yeah. <laughs> hi guys, for the uh, experts among you, I think in the wrong place. <laughs> do kit manufacturers have? to be licensed by the aircraft manufacturer of the model they want to make before they make the kit kind of like car models which need to be licensed by ford or chevy etc depends on what country they come out of doesn't it i've yeah. asked this question to a said manufacturer so i have got a bit of an insight i won't go into the details of the company that did it but what happened was was that um, they manufacture a current aircraft. It's it's in the infantry at the moment. So what happened was was that they literally approach them uh, and say to them, you know, out of courtesy, um, and normally there is a licensing agreement done purely because uh, in some of the instructions, if they use the company's air, the aircraft's manufacturer's name, for instance, you can't write that without having uh, authorization for doing it. Um, and also, the thing is, is that it's it's one of those things. It's all intellectual property rights of like the the aircraft design and stuff like that. You can't just do it. So what happens is, is that the said manufacturers approach the company and they simply say, we would like to do a model of yours. They might not give them, because we've spoken to Pranjit about this as well, and it wasn't Airfix I'm talking about, for everyone thinks I'm jumping down that one. Um, but they will literally do a, a agreement between both parties, uh, and it's usually over a certain amount of time that they will do licensed products for and all the rest of it. It's not as expensive as I thought it was. But this is just for one company with one aircraft manufacturer uh, when they did the deal for it. It wasn't as bad as I thought uh, for the money that was involved for it. But at the end of the day, if it's a car, and we've seen this famously with obviously Tammy and Ferrari have fallen out um, now. So there's no licensed products from Ferrari with Tamiya kits. So that's a real shame because they did some really nice one. Do they still win with Porsche, do we know? Porsche they are. I think Ferrari's just out of everybody yeah so i don't think it's just tammy i think it's it's the slot cars everything i think it's to uh, again to do with the licensing and not renewing it so whether that will change i don't know yes um but yeah they've still got it in with porsche and i presume they've got it in with mercedes as well because they've, they've done a lot of mercs lately haven't they yeah good point yeah um and i presume the japanese ones but they've only got certain is it toyota they've got a mazda Yes, yeah. They haven't got any Honda. I think Honda's with Fujima, I think. Mm. Ashima must have a few as well, so... Because obviously back uh, in the day, Tamiya actually sponsored... Which team was it? The Formula One team? Oh, God, yeah. I don't they know. were actually on a Formula One car for a, for, for a while. I can't remember which team yeah. that was. Yeah. Who weren't they? Um, I don't know. Um, but yeah, the, the, as far as I know, the uh, definitely the Ferrari one's gone, mm. so... 
But the problem you've got like from an aircraft point of view is that say we wanted to release a peer model of a F-18 Hornet, then obviously, you know, from our point of view, it's now Boeing who own it. So if we was to then market it as an F-18 Hornet, that is owned by Boeing. So yeah. they could easily come along to us, send us a cease and desist because we're using the words F-18 you know, Hornet, you know, on, on the box because it's their item. Um, and technically we are selling a representation of their product. So I don't think for a minute you would stand up in court and be able to say it's got nothing to do with them because they yeah. own it and they build it. You know, and that's what we were saying. We, we had this conversation with Airfix from Project from Airfix a couple of weeks ago. And we were saying that, so is that why they do stuff that isn't current? Because technically they don't have to buy the licensing, you know, and yeah. things like that. And as I said, they don't tend to, you know, do kits of modern stuff. They tend to keep to older stuff and all the rest of it. So they don't have that trouble like other manufacturers do. But certainly you look at any box now, it will have on there licensed by Boeing or if it's cars by different manufacturers and things like that. You know, Italeri, if you look at any of their boxes, they've usually got whoever owns it label on it somewhere. Yeah, they've always got Lockheed Martin. Yeah. Stuck somewhere, so that play Italeri, I won't uh, thingy for it for Lockheed Martin stuff. Wouldn't surprise me though if there are certain manufacturers that don't get the license in and just go for it. You've got to be a brave person to do that in this day and age, I'll tell you now. To sit there and just go, well, stuff it, because, yeah. <laughs> Especially how much tooling costs and stuff. Yeah, yeah. you get sent you a just... cease and desist and you've just spent, you know, say a quarter of a million on tooling and all the rest of it to, for your kit and then get sent that just for not getting in touch with them and finding yeah. out. I suppose it depends on where in the world you are there, doesn't it? Whether or not you... I know what you're getting at. Yeah. That's not... <laughs> Let's go down that road. <laughs> uh, right. Okay. Hi guys. Placed an order and had a confirmation on the twenty fifth. Heard nothing since. Uh, is this just down to the current situation, or should I be worried? Normally, I get a dispatch email within a couple of days. Cheers. That's Ken. Who's the order with Ken? A little bit more information. One um, was it me or Matt? Uh, is it like Flory models or PM models? I'm assuming it's PM models because uh, 25th was when? When was the 25th? Last Saturday. So the Flory models store closed on Saturday. So, yeah. It probably was me, but being in my way the weekend and I was shut Monday. Yeah. Um, it's probably gone out. I just, to be honest, I've been that thingy, the dispatch notes, of, I've got to catch up on them. Yeah. Uh, so it's, it's gone up. As, I, I kind of remember your name and I think it's gone up, just not got round to dispatching it on the site yet so i'm gonna have to sit there tomorrow morning and catch up with them all before they get out of hand again and obviously refund postage what required and body blah, blah usual stuff but yeah like like we're saying i am working part-time i was saying to phil earlier i'm kind of working part-time but doing full-time hmm. work that makes sense in a in a smaller time scale so yes. it's um Hence why things like that are not being forgotten. It's just I'm, I'm doing it every few days. So, um, but yeah, I'm sure you're, it's gone in the post because everything's up to date pretty much apart from a, the Heinz and whatever's coming today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there's a few back orders that are going out tomorrow. Um, and, you know, yeah. So, yes. Okay. Don't That's... be stressed if you don't yeah. get a quick response, if that yes. makes sense. It is in the system. It is being done and it will be going out if there is a problem i will be in touch yes or andy will be in touch and we do have to say that if you're on the pm store as you can see it next to us here if it's showing it's in stock we've got it if it's showing it's out of stock we ain't we can get it but like we were saying earlier it depends on because i did have somebody message me the other day about do we carry stock levels of because obviously he's been stung because he's tried to order kits and people haven't got them and and things like that he got caught up with apparently the incident with the tornado oh yeah he bought from a said company and then obviously yeah. never received the kit and got a refund yeah. with an apology so and it was like yeah. well uh, if you put an order with us and we've got it then that's it, it we don't yeah. do this thing of that's you why know, we don't take the money before that's it we don't take the money beforehand no. we'll do pre-orders because normally if it's a pre-order situation that's a flory members they get a discount on it before it actually goes out and any that are left go to the site but again it's one of those things 
Uh, where can I find 148? Uh, I think he means El Salvador decals. Can't find any in 172nd. Great show. 148. What? Oh, sorry. Uh, was that uh, Salvador? Is that an aircraft? El Pass. Salvador, the country. Yeah, but he just got Salvador. Is in S A L V A D O R. Yeah, that's El Salvador. El Salvador. Yeah. What aircraft is it? A Uruguayan one here. <laughs> uh, it depends that... what aircraft it's for, doesn't it? Yeah. If you look on Hannans. Yeah, they they'd know. If you've got if you put your aircraft in, they'll tell you what decals are available or in sort of um in what scale as well if you put your scale in and your aircraft you're after it'll bring all the aftermarket and decal options for it um just before they flick off here i've got a couple of questions phil if your business continues to grow would you consider opening a second store <laughs> no i've got far too much times on my hand everyone's been saying this are we going to open one down south down here to be honest with you i you know there's no point us running two stores separate as we do because one, there's not enough people down here in the southwest to warrant having one, and I haven't got the time to man it myself. So, no. No. so it's uh, easier for us to have one global headquarters. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You've, hey, I'm not being funny, but you've seen what happened to their move over expanded, and they've all, you know, not here anymore, shall we say? Yeah, that's it. The market's changed anyway. It's not like football through the door anymore. Everything's like online, so you don't really need a store in every town, city, or whatever. So it's not how the world works anymore. But yeah. even before, and the, the big majority of the sales was yeah online sales. That was the reason, sort of like for it being a, a unit rather than a shop, wasn't it? Yeah, it's yeah, it's a it's a unit to do the postal things, but also so that people can visit and buy from as well but the majority of it's postal service anyway isn't it so yeah it is it's it's like 90 odd percent of our trade it is online you know from people coming through the door if it was just that we wouldn't be here full stop i just had a look on hannans and put in el salvador in quick search mm -hmm. was it 72nd yeah 48th he said 48th the new second They do do our Salvador decals on hands anyway. Uh, mainly to fair, it looks like they used Corsairs. Yeah, he was saying that he can find four. He can't find. He can find forty eighth. Sorry, he says, where can he find forty eighth? Because he can't find seventy second. Oh right, okay. They've got forty eighth and seventy second on hands. Various things, but it's very limited on what what you, you know what you're going to build. Hey, uh, this is jumping all up. Uh, question. Do you think anybody will model a wildcat? Well, we said about this. It's not, what? don't forget, the wildcats are very, very new aircraft. Um, and it's modern. And like Airfix saying, they tend to keep to stuff that's coming out of service. That's why they did the Lynxes and things like that. They don't tend to do new. Uh, they'd be obviously your go-to company to do it but the thing is it's very modern it's very secretive aircraft so i don't think they're going to be letting companies crawl all over it yet what a grumman wildcat modern. oh the wild sorry i thought you meant is in <laughs> helicopter wildcat no yeah, they do they do they've just put wildcat so to me that i was just thinking wildcat 48 oh, one yeah don't tell me yeah. on, i'll be boss to a wildcat for you, and then i flip when they figured they run about the helicopter one but yeah yeah no i don't think you're going to see one of them for a bit yeah, no. Keith, but don't trump to do a 30 second wildcat. Yeah, hmm. wrong one. Yeah. No, the is, well, is, there, is there anything that's any similarity between a wildcat and a lynx? No. No. Nothing no. at all. Not no. really. They look roughly the same sort of shape if you were blur your eyes from the distance coming out of the pub at late at night. So it's not that you could, they could use no, any of the models? No, no, from no, the... no. Nothing like that at all. They are completely different animals. Oh, we've got another one for a zero. No, oh, that's it. Everyone's going to be building zeros. Uh, Matt, any ideas when the uh, Eddard Lysanders will be released or in stock? Uh, no. 
Is that right? Nope. We're just waiting on them to come in, I suppose, or when Eddard release them. So, soon as they're here, they'll be in. Don't just... worry about that. It's a uh, good kit. You know, for the zeros, I'll put an I'll put another pre-order thing up on the forum. So if anyone wants to put the names down, yeah, for, what a week. Yeah, we'll do it for a week because then uh, it's not going on and on. So yeah, because yeah. then I can. Um, so what's Wednesday? So we'll give it till next Wednesday. So you've got weekend or today. Yeah. When are you going to put it up? Are you going to put it up today? I'll put it up today. We'll do another pre-order for the zeros. Yeah. Um, and then, if you you know, if even if you've mentioned it in chat, you put your name down on there. So we've got numbers of who wants what. Mac order three six or whatever, and then we'll get them ordered. Uh, right. Yeah. Sorry. I Sorry. Yes, Keith, but they've all gone. <laughs> uh, question for these: These are the tops, which we do do them in the store. They're under tools. Yeah. Um... They're the um. What was it spelt wrong? <laughs> Yeah, Mr. Sprout. I think they sold Mr. out. I see it. Yeah, these yeah, are the no, famous they... Mr. Sprout ones. Yeah. Um, <laughs> at, there's some more coming on the restock order, so they're all going back in stock. That can little I known point company, point? Mr. Sprout. Can I I like that, 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 that wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> Probably me, but I like Mr. Sprout. The trouble so is, I'm what happens is, when you do that, that's what I'm guilty of. Then I copy and paste it, and before you yeah. know it, you've got 100 items all called Mr. Sprout. <laughs> 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 so yeah this is what they are they're basically twist tops and they just go on these bottles and they go on other people's as well the only downside to it is the nozzle is a little bit short so if you get here i've just got a piece of brass tube four mil poke it in the end and you're good to go um and they're very handy because if you knock it over they don't empty out instantly <laughs> as you've done as i've done yes you've hence whilst i've got the tops I leave mine open all the time as well. I don't get, don't seem to get any evaporation from the bottles. So, mm. uh, right. Tim's just asked a question about the stealth that's coming in from Tammy. That's coming in with the space shuttles next month, middle of next month, I think. No, I won't be pre-ordering them. I've only got so many coming because I've ordered a carton. I'm afraid they're just going to go up, and it's a bit first come first serve. I think on them. If they go well, I'll be ordering some more. Put it that way, because again, it's a special order stuff, so I can just order them for whenever. So, um, yeah, keep an eye out. Put them on your thing list. <laughs> Sean says, "Will Grumman require Augusta Whistling to pay a fee for using a Wildcat name? Since Grumman's aircraft, you can't you can't trademark a name though, can you? That's a because Wildcats actually a." animals name into it and the animals can't ask Grumman to pay a use for it can they? Did we have this thing with the wildcat though when um, it was the must be an animal thing? Yeah, yeah god knows don't go down that route again I'm still getting flashbacks <laughs> uh, yeah I can remember being in the car coming back from a model show Steve reading his text messages on his phone having fits because people are asking all sorts of questions i think we ought to resurrect that one and do it again <laughs> no <laughs> just for a bit of a giggle uh, right okay so we just had somebody try to spam the chat oh did you ban them chuck them out yeah uh. not right. for that spelling thing is it grammarly <laughs> no we're okay uh, does anyone do Chinooks yes yeah Italy and Trumpeter yes and as Nathan showed Afix reboxed it didn't they yeah I say we ought to, we ought to have a look at the prices of what that's um, gone up to now for a second and one yeah is anyone is someone being a new one now A new what? Chinook. A Chinook? Not what I know of, no. Mm -mm -mm. Maybe I dreamt it. <laughs> Rob says, can you still get the Tamiya F111 with the Hummer included? 
Yeah, that's what it was, wasn't it? They, I've got the uh, Hummer still. The one I, I did that was the F sixty, was the Stealth Fighter with the Hummer. Yeah, but he's put F one eleven. Oh right. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a bit of a typo. Yeah. Uh, Hi guys, uh, is there much difference between Eddard 72nd B24 Raiders in the Sky uh, version and I think and I presume he means the Eddard Raiders in the Sky which would you recommend? Say that again, sorry, I didn't... I think, well, so I'm, I'm trying to sort of decipher it. Uh, hi guys, is there much difference between Eddard's 172nd uh, B-24 Raiders in the Sky, oh sorry, and the 1945 version? Which one yes. would you recommend? Isn't one a G yes. and one's a whatever? One's a J and one's an H. Yes, so one's got uh, the bull um, turret, one's got the glass front, isn't it? Yeah, and the, and the H one's gone, that's not available anymore. And I don't think the J is, but people have still got stocks of it, but it's discontinued, as far yeah. as I know. It's the same kit, it's just got, one's got a turret on the front and one got the glass front, hasn't it? Hmm. It's the same kit initially, though, isn't it? Apart from the glass work, I think. So... Uh, It's, it's what choice you want, whether you want to do... A, no, a D, isn't it? It's a D and a J, sorry, not an H. It's a D version of a, a, a Liberator and a J version. Yeah. So it's whichever version you want. If you want to turret at the front or you don't. So, yeah. Cool kit, though. James asked, is a privateer a, is a Rebel Privateer a matchbox kit? No, yes. James, I need to answer it. Darren asked that. Uh, yes, it is anyway, because it's the only one in it in 70 seconds. Yes. And Adrian says, sorry, Adrian says, I want to paint an F-16 in Israeli colours. What kit to get? Tamir, did, did Israeli use standard F-16s? No. you got to get the kinetic one. one, don't you? Yeah. Kinetic one, isn't it? Yeah. Because isn't it a big version to convert the Tamir one into an Israeli version? Is it the Barak or the... Yeah, they called it... you got the Suffer. <laughs> the Barak and there's the other one. The isn't Storm, the, the, isn't it? Yeah, something like that, yeah. They've got lots of extra bits on that. Like, big, bigger fuel tanks and... What block is that? <laughs> I, they don't actually do it like blocks because, again, it's like uh, they have their sort of version of it. Because they have spines on theirs with electronic humps in it and stuff like that. Yeah. And then they do the normal version, which doesn't have the hump, which is basically, I think, their older ones. And then the two new ones they've got is the Suffer, isn't it? Which is the I, if I remember rightly, isn't it? The I. Uh, yeah. F-16 I is the Suffer. Yeah. Here we go. We're having a lesson in Hebrew here. Brill. Suffer Storm and Barak is Lightning. They do mm. another one as well, don't they? There's three Israeli F-16s at Kinetic do. I can't think of the other one. Oh, oh is it? I've got, I've got two of them in me. Oh, God, that's annoying. Somebody shut up in chat and tell me. Look a moustache. Yes, the eye is the suffer, because that's the one you built in 30 seconds. Yeah. Apparently, Hobby Boss have announced doing a 48 scale Chinook. Oh, right, okay. Yeah, I, th I thought I'd seen somebody was on about doing one. But that, though, wouldn't that just be a downscale, upscale of the Trumpeter 72nd and 35th one? Yeah, mind you, talking to Pramjet, as he was saying, it's not actually straightforward just upscaling and downscaling. Don't work like that. <laughs> Apparently, that's a myth, according to him, wouldn't it? Hmm. Rune says Israelis have used earlier F-16s. Yeah, they did. They had the old A ones. That's what Iron Eagle was, wasn't it? They had the Block Five, wasn't it? The very early one with the square tails. Hence, Iron Eagle One and Two, two of the greatest films ever to. <laughs> 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 it's not bad. It's got kafirs running around in the sky. It's all right. Phil's going to paint his zero and RLM eighty three. Because I'm going to make him. <laughs> the blue shade. 
Hey, this bomber down here I've got a review tomorrow. Has <laughs> that got RLM 83 on it? Probably. What bomb is that? I can't remember. That JU88 thing? The 188? No. I'm sure that's probably RLM underneath, isn't it? Uh, oh, yeah, 65 or 76 as well. <laughs> yes, review of this one tomorrow, everyone. i tell you what, if you want that kit, just to say, I would buy it because that will come and go and do it because it's Dragon. Yeah. It'll be one of them that comes and goes as fast as you're seeing it now because it's just what Dragon do, isn't it? Yes. Or, or Keat. Did we mention Bar Keat? Pardon? Or Keat. Or Keat. That's the other one, yeah. That's the other that's, one. That's an F-16D. All right. Is that the two-seat one? Yes. I do a suffer two-seat, isn't it? Suffer, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, twin-seat one. Still, still think yeah, Tammy has not done a twin seat F sixteen. Bizarre. Strange. Okay, do Vallejo model colours need uh, thinning for airbrushing? That's what a the normal white top. Uh, yeah, he's on about the metal colours, the Vallejo metal colours, which I could right. use these ones. In there. So these ones are actually quite thin. Um, I don't thin them per se. I usually just spray them straight out of the bowl. They hand paint beautifully, by the way. If you ever need a hand paint, it's, they're actually really good for hand painting. Are they up there with Citadel? No, they're not as good as Citadel for no. hand painting, but they're a very good second. <laughs> if you haven't got any Citadels, they're very good. I don't, but I know people who do thin it a bit, but I don't think it really needs it. It's quite thin stuff, that. And uh, do, 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 do. what else we got down in here? Uh, looking for PRS 72 351. What's that, Andy? What, sorry? A oh, PRS 72 351. Quick. Who one of them? I have no idea. That's a bit cryptic, isn't it? It's what? Bit... Did it give us a clue? It's a... 751, was it? Uh, PRS, where is it? Uh, 72. Yeah. Uh, God, my mouse is in the way now. Uh, wrong mouse. Uh, 351. Our survey says. <laughs> a guitar. Of course, eh? A guitar, I've got. Is that the ones, is it? 72 images of? Is it Corsair Decals, is it? Is that what um, it is? Salvador, there you go. Oh well, Salvador is it? A Salvadorian Corsair. Oh right. There you go. Was that what he was after? I've just found him in that case. Look, nine euros five from the Aviation Mega Store. There you go. Google's your friend. Hey, <laughs> hope we get royalties back for other Yeah, we got royalties for that. <laughs> 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 I ended up with a nice looking guitar. Uh, yeah, I had to get a guitar. <laughs> <laughs> is it a Stratocaster? <laughs> uh, is it possible to upscale them with graphics? Was they sorry? What scale were they then? He said second. It's got seventy-two. Oh, uh, right. So he wants forty-eighth. Ooh. Ooh. To be honest, though, what would you need? Because you could mask the FAS. Or just probably get decals to do that size anyway. So what was it? Was it PRS seventy two three five one? Hmm. So you tried PRS forty eight. That's still end up with a guitar. I take it. I take it. Then um, the aviation is is in the Netherlands, is it? Yes. That's the is big that one that by the airport by Schiphol. I'd about to say the, the going on our chat. It's massive. Yeah. Yeah, right. Might be worth a trip when we can move around again. Me and Andy are still in thingy that we haven't been able to go to Mosson. Mm. Do you know my phone all weekend? <laughs> saying this this time two years ago <laughs> from Mosson. I know on like um, Facebook there's been loads of like 
pictures from last year and year before that people have been posting up. It's sorely missed. Yes, it was a very good show. It was a good weekend, that was. Yeah. I'll definitely try again next year, I think, to go. So, yeah. Apparently they have a fighter hanging from the ceiling. What, a prize fighter? <laughs> We could have a, high, a fight hanging from the ceiling of. <laughs> yeah, we could. I want some second one. Right, where are we? I've got a question down here. I have a question for you guys. Is there some vehicle that you would uh, like to have uh, on a model kit from that is either made? Or is very old crummy kit. I want. I oh god, what? Uh, I I actually want that uh, a Belvedere <laughs> helicopter. <laughs> I really want a modern kit of a Belvedere, <laughs> which is never going to happen because it's too niche. But yeah, I would like that. I do like my helicopters. I'd like a nice forty-eighth or semi-second. Grumman Goose or something like that. What about vehicles though? Mm. God, that's an odd one. Hmm. But I think, as in car vehicles or yeah. military? Yeah, car. Cars? Yeah. Car, Benny. Because I don't know what. Because like, you get the main things that have, you know, like Airfix did the old. The MG thing yeah. from the Second World War that you know all the pilots seem to drive around in in the films. The MGTC. That's it, yeah. But I, I imagine another company does a better version of it. Yes. <laughs> Patrick wants a Suzuki Vitara. When you do a Suzuki <laughs> Vitara, there's a kit of it. <laughs> For GME, I'm sure do a Suzuki Vitara. One of them, one of the Japanese, you can get a Suzuki Vitara. Unless you want a real one, obviously. Is it? Is that the one where they used to have the rhinos on the... Yeah. Real cut <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. Nigel says, DHL just delivered a very large box, ordered a Merit 118th EF109E from eBay. He it was a plastic kit. Turns out it was pre-painted, assembled, display, <laughs> cabinet. <laughs> Read description. Hmm. Uh, there's a couple of questions in our chat and they're flicking again so uh, question on the 130 seconds era the Japanese used a metallic blue as a primer any suggestions as, as to the colour uh, thingy do it Mr. Colour and Mr. Aquius do the right colour for it don't they that turquoise I, can't, I don't know the number you'd have to look it up uh, question what is the recommended do it because it's flicking oh is there like a gloss oh, I'm, I'll give up <laughs> I'd recommend a gloss for what? Yeah, can you recommend a gloss or a flat coat uh, to use on top of her tacker orange line paints? Yeah, their own's pretty good. And yeah. Tamiya. To be honest, recently I've been using their own, their gloss, and it goes to hand absolutely fantastic. We used it still, pretty much on everything recently. I still swear by on that for yeah. everything. Yeah, everybody's got their own, really. It's, uh, there's that many out there, I think it's just your own personal preference, isn't it? A TR7? Mm -hmm. Oh dear. Yeah, someone did a TR7 though, didn't they? It's like a cheese wedge. Yeah, uh, Airfix. Airfix, yeah, I think they built that years ago. I used to have a TR7. That's not something. Hey, I tell you what, Andy, that's not something you admit to on live YouTube. It was like a Flintstones call with all the holes it had in the floor. That's bad to say, did you just use every feet before it's rough? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Andy. Right, so he says, with vehicles, he meant aircraft, tanks, ships, all sorts of stuff, not necessarily cars. <laughs> Again, there's a long and illustrious list of lots yeah. of things. Yeah. 
I think we ought to be thankful, actually. There is a lot of things that is modelled. It's a lot better than it used to be 10 years ago, thanks yeah. to Trumpeter releasing everything. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, I'll be boss. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what do we got here? Uh, da, 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 da. What happened to Steve? Steve's fine. He's in lockdown. Uh, excuse me, that's not eat anything that's on the floor in here, kids. I know you're bored, but you know, at this point, it could be an important part, like hey, a kit. It's Molly in the bin. Molly's attacking, you know that packaging you chuck in? She's quite partial to that. What, <laughs> yeah, the paper? Your brown paper, yeah. Right, okay. She, she quite taste, got a taste <laughs> for that at the moment. Uh, <laughs> she's running off around the house with it like the Andrex dog the other day. <laughs> Uh, sorry, uh, do, do, do. yeah, Steve's in lockdown at the moment, but he is fine. He's in the forum. If you go and you'll see him in there, he put the chops up occasionally in there. Uh, regarding the question about Tamiya sponsored in F1 cars, it was the Lotus in 1991. All oh, right, okay. Somebody's put the wall foot. Um, Molly. Whatever year that was. All oh, right, Molly, Molly, you can't keep eating that. You'll make yourself ill. See, look, I blame you. This is you. Yeah, be thankful. I want it back. It costs a lot of money, that does. Yes. Environmentally friendly. That's Molly. Leave it alone. Leave it. <laughs> um, do, 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 do. Saw another couple of good questions here. Right. Uh, 50 Cal says, Star Wars paint question for Phil. You said that the Falcon, you mix Tamiya flat, white and buff for an overall colour. Is it a close match to the studio's model white? Um, in those days, they used Floquil white, which you can't get anymore. There is companies online where they will sell you an exact copy of those colours. Um, but again, this is one of those really odd questions. If you're building it for a studio environment, this is my other side of stuff that I do. As you say, I do a lot of prop work and other stuff one-to-one -one scale. The thing is, if you're doing stuff for film work and you're going off an original prop they make them somewhat differently good to wait you've got to make them somewhat differently to how you might want to model your model at home so don't be too drawn down that rabbit hole of doing it exactly like the film prop the film prop was underneath about a billion watts of light okay so they used to do various colors and things to it so it looks good on film so i call it pantomime makeup okay so you want the colors to be big and vibrant but honestly if you look at that model in normal light it would look horrendous because they were doing it under very very you know huge amount of lighting so to get them to pop and to look they did them differently to how they actually are if that makes sense and that's the same with most props and items the chipping the weathering is normally overdone and over exaggerated so you can see it on camera otherwise all those little details would be lost so you know it's one of those things but i as i say i call it starship color and um it's one of those things where if you put it next on its own it looks like white but you put it with white looks nothing like white so it has that cream so what normally i just use flat white or anybody's white and i just knock in a little bit of buff literally a couple of drops of buff into 10 mil be more than enough probably uh, and then when you go through your sto you know your stations of weathering it and various bits and pieces it all goes out the window so what starts off as looking very white will probably look nothing like it um i've got one here look uh my one which we did where are we video builds uh, come on faster faster falcon I'm sure we've got it just down in here when we got to the painting stage. Where are we? Where's the painting stage? So here we are in the painting stage. And as you can see, it looks just like it's white. But it's actually an offset. So we're coming in there with all the decals and all the bits down there. And it looks quite white. And I'd say, but when you start going in with the weathering and you're making your way through and start to, you know, and you're just dulling it down, Starship filth. Back in stock. Back in stock. Good colour. <laughs> it's a store uh, near you. Very <laughs> that's it. But when you see it like this, you see it, it looks pretty, I think, spot on to it. So it's not so much of a problem. But again, I think people, it's, you know, we talk about RLM colours and stuff like that. It is, it's, it's a rabbit hole you really don't want to go down because you're just going to spend your entire life going through the motions of it or trying to get the right colors for it but there is companies out there who will happily flog you for a lot of money the correct colors uh and do it personally i just use what looks good to me 
as I do with all my stuff like that. Yep. It is sci-fi after all. And that is the other thing as well. You know, the point in its life where you're building the model. Yep. Have you heard about anyone doing the new kit of the Queen Elizabeth aircraft carrier anytime soon? Well, Airfix had it on their stand and then obviously speaking to the guys at Airfix, it was just a 3D model. It wasn't a thing. They did it just to see what people were thinking. <laughs> the teases. But it's not a kit that's coming anytime soon from them, apparently. For them to pay that money to have it done, there must be some thought in their minds to mm. think about doing it, at least. Do you know what I mean? It's got to be... I'm, I'm thinking the same as you there, Randy. I'm thinking if they're making that effort, it's in there. It, it, must, it must have cost them a few bob to have that, to have had that made. Hmm. But it's it's not something that a company does just to. Yeah. It, I don't know. Yeah, you to be honest, you won't be surprised if Airfix did release it in the future. I think in the okay. future, I think because obviously it's British, it's everything that goes along with it. It's perfect for them, isn't it? It's their market. Yeah. You know, yeah. so I wouldn't be at all surprised. But I did mention to them at the show about it and they were like no it's just a 3d print just to see they had somebody did it for them it wasn't even them apparently somebody did it for them uh and right. they just put it in the cabinet just to get see what people would say and results of you know feedback and yeah, stuff like that yeah was it i don't know i think 350 yeah 350 something like that. i don't know exactly but i think it was about 1 350 it looked all right but again it was basic but as they said it's just literally a quick rough job just to get uh, feedback on said kit Graham says FX will release it in 2065 it'll yes. be big though won't it oh yeah hmm. it'll be big long hmm. do you know what it's the sort of thing Trumpeter would have done back in the day yeah <laughs> isn't it yeah or definitely it would have been right there. up there straight yeah would have done it but yeah I don't know Dennis says how many carriers did the UK have during the Cold War how many carriers well at least Two. Well, it depends, isn't it? If you go a little bit further back, we had a few, didn't we? Yeah, because we had yeah, Art Royal, Eagle, yeah. Eagle. Yeah, what's yeah. the other ones? Art Royal two, three, and four. Depends <laughs> how long after the Second World War, of the Cold War, you mean? Yeah. Or how close to the eighties and nineties? He's on about nineteen eighty-eight. Two. Yeah, in that point, yeah, two. Or one and a half. <laughs> yeah. One one yeah. <laughs> Then we just we're have an HMS island, Ocean hey, as well. We're, um, we're an island. We are one giant aircraft carrier. Yeah, that's it. We're just static. <laughs> we're just anchored. Yeah, that's it. We just don't go anywhere. We're just anchored in the English Channel. We just keep poking Europe occasionally to annoy them. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, question that. when was the last time you used humbrol paint and what was your results did you get with it Matt, do you know what <laughs> i used my i used some yesterday there you go and i used it for weathering and a dust effect and i've got it here isn't that a coincidence so i've used 187 which i think is middle stone yes and i used it on my truck for weathering the chassis and doing a bit of streaking and stuff but i, I was only brushing it and and I weren't spraying it. So there you go. That's the last time I... I actually used as well some Compu Colour. Ooh. So, yeah. <laughs> and really, and they're in me... I bet you can't see them, but they're in my pot somewhere. Somewhere like in my little tray. Hold on. There we go. They're in there somewhere. They're all mixed in with all the stuff. But yeah, my little weathering tray. So yes, yesterday for me. Graham says... Eagle, Art Royal, Victorious, Bulwark and Hermes. That was him. There you go. Oh, Eagle, yes, yes. And uh, Matt's, uh, sorry, Phil says, Matt, has my home been sent out yet? If not, can I add to it? Who's that with? Phil Frisk. Uh, yes. You're on pre-order, weren't you, Phil? So no. Yeah, yeah. No, so yes, you can. Talk to Andy, though, because Andy's done the invoicing, so I'll have to amend it. So send Andy a PM, what you yeah, want. You, yeah, if you PM me in the um, forum, Phil, and I'll, uh, yeah, what you want, and I'll send you an invoice. Yeah, because they're definitely going out. Some's going out tomorrow, and some's going out on Friday, so, yeah. 
And Roger says, is there an Augusta Westland 169 model kit? Not what I know of. Because he sponsored, uh, where is he? He fundraises for a charity for Magpass, which is a uh, air ambulance, isn't it? Yeah, no, I think you've asked that before, ain't you, Roger? And I don't think there is. I have to say, got to have a look around the new Cornwall one the other day. That's very swish. Yeah. Yeah, they've got a brand new one. Uh, oh, just uh, in other news, apparently there's a resident's factory is back open. Oh, good. Because somebody's just asked about the 48th SU57. We've got the 72nd one coming back in stock. Uh, the 48th one, well, I ain't got a date for it, but I presume if the factory's back open. And we're getting some more Heinz uh, sometime next month. Mm. So, yeah. Uh, we've got a couple in here just before we go. Uh, uh, have you used airbrush cleaner for uh, a thinner for spraying? Yes. Yeah, uh, Vallejo airbrush cleaner is great for model air <laughs> acrylics. I think better than the actual thinner. Yeah. It's got a little bit more soap in it or something. It stops tip dry a lot better. It's like a, yeah. its own retarder in it already. It's actually really good stuff for that. Did you notice though it takes a bit longer to dry? Yeah, yeah. It's also got a like a, quite a rubbery feel. In fact, if you go back through the live airbrushing from a couple of years ago, the videos are on YouTube for anyone can watch. I did it on there and actually you can see it. It's actually got almost goes like a latex effect yeah. before it totally dries. You do have to be careful with it. It's quite soft. One of the guys is asking, any news on the Zvezda SU-52? Wait, 57? 57, sorry. Oh, yeah, good. I've just answered him, mate. It's coming out this year, they're doing a 48th one. What's one they filled in? Was that a 72nd one then? 50, no. The, the, the thing is, is the felon, isn't it? The 57's a new felon. Hmm. You did that... You've never done one of them. You did that thing either. You made up a Northrop YT, whatever it was. Yeah, it? mine was a fake thing. Mine was the widow maker, Black Widow. This thing. Hold on, I'll get it. Uh. <clears throat> YF23. Uh. With a rattly. Ah, the rattly thing. The nose weight. But yeah, we did that one. So do Spencer do a 72nd one then? Yes. This is an American. I just was prattling around and put it into yeah. Splinter. <laughs> <laughs> Looks good though, doesn't it? It looks like it could be. Yes, it could be. That's it. Is it right? Christ, that's close to the edge. Ooh, deep, deep. Just about. <clears throat> uh, apparently it was a guy who scratch built the Queen Elizabeth and apparently he's doing the Prince of Wales as well. So All right, thanks. Uh, what's the best kits for in 135th for uh, through for one 350th for rush uh, for ships? Tammy do a very good let range. I suppose it depends what area you're doing, doesn't it? Mm, really? But it does depend on what scale and what type you want to what? do. Yeah, exactly. Hmm. Uh, Uh, when was the last time any of you have done an old uh, out of the box custom car like an old rat fink stuff? I haven't, unfortunately. I haven't. I've never done one. Me neither. No, I've never done it like that. Mm. Crap and cars, really, aren't we? That sort of... I don't know, I've done a couple this year. I've done my Audi and my Lamborghini. Yeah, yeah. and that, I've got, well, they both have looked really good, but they out the. Out, they, Lamborghini, I was quite surprised on how nice the colour looks. <laughs> Thank you. You see that brown colour that doesn't look brown in real life. <laughs> it looks proper shite on when you show me it. It's like, look at that. It's like nice, shame about the colour. Yeah, yeah, it looks still pretty really nice in real life. So right, I think we're up to speed, guys. We all up to I've got two more yeah. just left down in here. Uh for the team, what do you stock on your paint racks regarding Tamiya paints ten or twenty three mil? We can only get ten mil in the UK. And uh, ten, yeah. yeah. So we don't actually have an option on that one. 
not had 23 mil for a good 10 years or so but yeah oh yeah maybe a bit more than that i think actually damn my way yeah. local shops i think they stopped them in the late 90s yeah. so yes i remember my one of my shops i used to go to in barnstable they had a bin bucket full with all the old 23 mils in there and they were getting rid of them so i bought tons of them uh, <laughs> adrian any lack of thinner yeah i was about to say lack of thinners uh, does anyone make a seamless intake for an F16 uh, NSI smallmouth? I wouldn't know. One semi second. Don't know about semi second. In semi second, no. getting in, fill it. <laughs> yeah. uh, guys, obviously, they're saying everyone's hearing rumours about wing nut wings. I will say one thing. Um, uh, something that I do, obviously, flight sim in that. One of the, the companies who are basically like wing nut wings of the flight sim world. Um, somebody posted up a load of crap on, about them online saying how they were going and they were doing this, that and the other. Within 12 hours, the company jumped on it and said, this is bullshit, all of it, it's crap, we're fine, we're doing this, I made a statement. And I was thinking, so why haven't we not wings done that? Anyway, just saying. Uh, <laughs> Don't know. Uh, so yes, I think that'll do us then today. Yeah, um, Dennis says... Five bongs for Big Ben, 5 p.m. for Feed the Kids, Phil. Yeah. Big Ben's not working at the moment, though. So it I can't think he means, yeah, that's it. It's my, my kids, clearly, both of them here, the furry ones. Yeah, <laughs> Big, Big Ben's broken at the moment, so he doesn't yes. bong. Yeah, he doesn't bong anymore. Yeah. He should it's do after cost, this. Hey, and it's going to cost about five million to fix it. <laughs> 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 never mind that's a whole other show anyway thank you very much for joining us this afternoon we'll be back with you tomorrow night at 7 30 where obviously we'll be having a look around uh obviously the group builds because they're all ending andy or have his finished won't you andy you mig yeah uh so we'll have that finished as well i'll get the photos and everything done because obviously that will close at midnight tomorrow night so literally like andy you've all got a day to finish your migs Okay, because that obviously the group builds coming to an end, and then obviously what is it? Beaches to the bulge, bulge to the beaches, be uh, bulge, bulge to Berlin. Berlin, bulge to Berlin. That's it. Is uh, the next one up on that one as well? So um, you know that's the next one that's going to be starting afterwards, and then we'll get that one going uh, and sorted through. And obviously the COVID one will just carry on, and we're, we're, all the time we're doing these shows, the COVID build will stand. Basically, that's the way I'm looking at it. So uh, we'll just be carrying on with this one. I have done a preliminary, preliminary post for people to put in what they what they want to build for Berlin to Berlin. Be, yeah. Berlin. Bulls to Berlin. Bulls to Berlin. Um, Bill's going to get the other bits done tonight and we'll get it all sorted so it'll all be ready for Friday. 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 First is Friday, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So yes, we'll definitely be going on with that one. So yes, looking forward to that one. It'll be very good. I'm going to carry on. As I say, this is a video build um, and it will be obviously the first part of this will be up with you on Friday. Again, if you haven't seen it, the review for the Zero, that is up on the internet right now or over all the other bits and pieces. I've got a review for this one, which I will do tomorrow as well. So that one will be up with you tomorrow um, as we make our way through. And as I say, this thing will be up with you. First part of that on Friday as we make our way through. So still lots and lots to see and do. Like why? don't you us aren't we kids mm -hmm. right. yeah that's it children need feeding clearly do you want to say hello quickly there we go right this thing needs feeding and the other one's there looking at oh she's coming in as well so we've got to go right thank you very much for joining us everybody. happy modeling take care see you soon Bye. Bye. <laughs>